coming through to the vehicle station, please. Ladies and gentlemen, as you're about to take off, please tell ensure once again that you have your seat belt, security passes, tray tables, stowed, seat bag is in its upright position, and the window shades are drawn open. For your safety, toilet should not be used at this time. Thank you. For countless generations, the Moken drifted amongst the islands of the Andaman Sea. Travelling on their traditional houseboats, the Kabang, they were totally self-sufficient. In order to gather their food from the ocean, and using nothing more than a hereditary skill for freediving, they dived up to 30 metres deep on a single breath, a skill that until fairly recently would remain unmatched the world over. December 2004, a catastrophic tsunami wipes through the western seaboard of Thailand, killing thousands and causing untold damage. Whilst many were caught unaware by the tsunami, the Moken knew it was coming. The stories of Laboon had reverberated through generations of storytelling. They knew that the moment the waters receded, Laboon was here. So it was without hesitation that all of the Moken throughout the archipelago retreated up to the hills and to safety. Those at sea faced their boats into the oncoming wave and rowed it out like the master seafarers that they are. The aftermath of the tsunami heralded the start of the greatest disturbance to the Moken way of life in their long history. The Thai military stepped in, and in the guise of purely altruistic aid, they started to build the Moken a village on Koh Sarin, well within the national park. They were then told that they must stay in this village, and if they were caught living in any other part of the national park or engaging in their traditional nomadic ways, they would be punished. At first, despite their new lack of freedom, not all was bad about the new situation. They were given aid from the government, they were protected from pirates for the first time in years, and they could go about their existence in relative peace. However, as the years progressed, more and more restrictions were placed upon them. They were told what fish they could catch, and when they could catch them. They were forced to sell any excess fish to the national park at a tiny percentage of their actual worth thereby forcing them to have to work for the National Park in order to buy rice and other staples in poorly paid positions which barely kept the roof over their heads. To add to the feeling that the Moken are prisoners in their island paradise, the Thailand National Parks are guarded by a semi-militarised group of park wardens, bearing full camouflage, silent, high-powered boats, discreet weaponry and the general attitude of a group of disenfranchised militia. To add to their problems, the burgeoning fishing industry is causing the seas around Thailand to be swept clean of life, meaning catching food for their families is becoming increasingly difficult. Unfortunately, the power and influence behind the fishing industry in southern Thailand is without precedent, 
and a blind eye is given to much of the fishing corporation's activities as a result of threats and bribes. Earlier in the year, a Moken fisherman was shot at by a fishing vessel as he accidentally stumbled upon them dynamite fishing at night on the reef in the park. The idea behind our trip to freedive with the Moken was to help us better understand the reality of their situation. So with this in mind, we completed the long journey to Koh Sarin, with the Moken as our skippers and guides, to this picture postcard perfect group of emerald green islands in the Andaman Sea, just west of the Thai mainland. Upon our arrival, we were welcomed into the tribe with a blessing ceremony, to rid us of evil spirits and to keep us safe whilst diving with them. As an additional measure of assistance, we brought with us a substantial quantity of freediving equipment in order to help them continue to harvest the seas. The gear was all donated by freedivers back in the UK and was shipped out in advance of our trip. When the National Park Service was looking the other way and the men had returned from their day's work, we handed the kit out. Initially shy and not forthcoming, once we had convinced them that this was a friendly donation with no strings attached, the equipment quickly found deserving home. We came to Surin for many reasons but one of the most rewarding was to help the Moken children re-engage with freediving, as a direct request from the Moken elders. Because of the restrictions placed upon them, freediving for food seems too difficult and without any great purpose to many of the younger generation. In the past, when living on their kabangs, drifting between islands and reefs, the centuries-old knowledge was passed down naturally through observation. Now they are forced to live on land, they no longer have this interaction. And although many of the adults are still expert freedivers, they don't really know how they freedive, they just do. We developed a simple two-sided information sheet which aided us in showing the children how we freedive. The National Park Service didn't appreciate our efforts though. We were taken to one side when back in the camp and were briefly interrogated then fined for our actions. We were apparently conducting non-tourist type activities, whatever that means. Just more proof that the government does not see the Moken as individuals with rights and needs, but a poorly funded tourist attraction under their complete control. Our time with the Moken was filled with wonderful experiences. We learned how to craft traditional Moken spears and how to use them. We learned how they interact with their environment and how they used to live before the modern world started to take over. But moreover, we were given the opportunity to live and freedive 
with a truly remarkable people. into the water, it was immediately apparent just how comfortable they are in the sea. Unlike western freedivers, their movements seem not just for the purpose of efficient forward momentum, but instead the Moken use their entire body with an undulating and casual fluidity, caring less about depth and time, but instead focusing purely on gathering food as quickly as they can. The Moken will typically use either rigid 3 metre pole spears or very simple Hawaiian slings to catch their food. And watching them was like taking a masterclass in fish behaviour and hunting skill. We asked our Moken friends Hook and Noi what they would do if they were given the choice of truly returning to the old ways or totally leaving them behind and entering the modern world. The answer was simple. <laughs> <laughs> the Moken are in no doubt a very difficult position. Forced out of their traditional way of life by the government and the never ceasing onslaught of the modern world, we have to ask is there a future for the Kosa in Moken? The only way I can see that the Moken could continue to hold on to their heritage is with a combination of international awareness for their plight and very proactive lobbying. Combine this with real-world solutions that would make them an invaluable and untouchable commodity to the authorities that have such a stranglehold over their existence, and we may just save the last of the sea nomads. Put a one foot in front of the other